The anime begins by showing us a kind of flashback in which we see two happy little boys playing and who already promise each other eternal love to the point that they plan to get married when they are a couple of students at the University of Tokyo, or as they call it, La Tude. However, due to life's circumstances, the little girl has to leave the city due to moving. Here we meet our protagonist, Keteru Rishima or Ki for his friends, who despite his efforts to enter the Tude, has not achieved any good rest results sailing the entrance exam twice. He also gets some bad news from his grandmother. It turns out that the old lady has decided to abandon her hot springs business to travel around the world, leaving Ki in charge of all the administration. The problem is that in the place, Ki is going to meet a group of waifus who work for the lady, after a lot of awkward scenes and pure misunderstanding, listening to the explanation Haruka, the aunt of our boy, tells them that from now on he will be like his boss, so to speak, and that they will have to live all under the same roof. This is how Key starts his temporary life until he can enter Tudai, giving his best so that they don't discover the truth about the fact that he has already tried twice and nothing to get in, but it doesn't work out well. By surprise, they reveal that one of the girls in the enclosure is a classmate of Tudai. Despite knowing the truth about her terrible performance, she decides to keep the secret between the two of them, and not say anything to the rest of the group because it seems that something inside her leads her to protect what is supposed to be a simple stranger. However, before continuing with our story, let's go briefly to the past, where we meet Shinobu, a young girl who met Ki by chance on her first visit, leaving in the process a notebook with a drawing of her smiling in that moment helps her to overcome something kind of ugly that happened to her in the morning. In short, the girl was soon going to move to another city, leaving behind the life of problems she had at school, but also her precious sensei, who was the only one who accepted her despite being somewhat shy. Later that same day after class, Shinobu goes on his way to the hot springs where he had been told he would be able to find the owner of the notebook. But first, he runs into the energetic Su and the rest of the waifus, who, after reviewing the sketch sheets, realized that it was Ki himself, who, to their good fortune, had just arrived from running errands in the village. But amid all the commotion, instead of fixing things, they only ended up scaring the young girl away. As night falls, taking advantage of the fact that Su made a super spicy meal, the group decides to go to the restaurant where Shinobu happens to live, so that while the rest of them are eating, he can clear up the situation and everyone can be at peace. Although the plan seemed good at first, things didn't go so well when they arrived at the place because due to the same issues of the move, the owners decided to close earlier to get the last boxes ready and leave first thing in the morning. Harmika again explains that the reason for her departure is because the business was not doing so well, and to top it off, the girl's parents were divorced and undecided about who should stay with her. But then things changed the next day when we see that our boy together with the help of his waifus, made a farewell party, which at the end of the day, although she ends up cooking everything, she spends a nice time with the people she already considered her family. They not only allow her to stay and live by her side, but also understand the fact that being a simple girl, having to go through a lot of problems, ends up being too heavy a burden for someone so young. Thus, after sharing some thoughtful words with Ki, who tells her that she should start to have a little more confidence in herself, and that if she tries several times, everything she proposes will come true, she manages to face her parents and confess that she wants to stay and live the things she believes she will be happy for, such as having her first friend at school. In the end, the bosses accept and Shinobu can start from scratch, where even though her first contact with her classmates does not go well, at least she no longer has the fear of not knowing which path she should take, and now all the problems that will come, she will face them with confidence in her own decisions and feelings. But leaving this aside, things don't get positive for Ki, who days later receives another result of his exams in which, as usual, he does very badly. So together with his friends, he decides to go to drown his sorrows at karaoke, or well, they wanted to, because halfway there they run into Motoko, another of the waifus who lives in the hot springs, only that due to her kendo training, we had not seen her until now. However, their first interaction is not very friendly and everything gets worse when later on, Kei enters a room without asking and finds the young girl almost as if God brought her into the world. To her good fortune, the rest of the girls come to explain this situation to her friend, who at first does not approve of him in the house however, after seeing that his presence is important to have a place to live, she has no choice but to put up with her anger and accept him as a companion. In the middle of all this, Naru explains that she is only 15 years old and is already a master of the sword, with impressive skills and almost superhuman strength. But apparently, she has a trauma from the past that makes her very nervous because as soon as she interacts a little with Ki, she blushes or even almost loses consciousness. Briefly, in a sort of flashback, we are shown that the waifu's sister left her to go with a man and that this not only makes her have a certain hatred for the husband, but also makes her think that the reason for her discomfort is because she has fallen in love with our boy. So as she had no other way to solve her insecurities, she decided to challenge him to a duel of swords, where if he won, he would be accepted as administrator. 
but if he lost, he would have to leave the premises. Ironically, the supposed fight becomes more of a chase by Motoko, who, to her good fortune, is rescued by Ki before falling off the roof, and thanks to this, she also realizes that maybe the boy is not as bad as she thought. The ones who realized that there was something wrong with Ki were the rest of the Waifus, who after the little accident he had with the crazy girl of the katana, found his ID where it was clear that he was not yet a student of two day. However, Nero comes to his rescue and decides to give him the chance to stay at the school, but he has to fulfill certain conditions. Starting with that, in the following study simulators, he cannot get a bad result, and as an extra, he will also be responsible for all the homework of the house. The first stop was at Kano's homework, who was in charge of cleaning the floors of the bathrooms and the corridors. But things don't get any easier for the little bread, who struggles more than once to try to fulfill his obligations, but in the end, he always has some problem or runs into some misunderstanding that leaves him very exhausted. Anyway, in a certain part of the day, while Ki was studying with one of the waifus, this one mentions to him the possibility that it would be better not to wear himself out and take his exam in another university, something that in a way makes the boy a little uncomfortable, and in passing makes him remember his promise and also that he gains confidence and tells it to Naru who super serious tells him that this kind of thing is never forgotten. But in the end, they are interrupted in the middle of the reflective moment and cannot make clear a certain part of the conversation. The next morning, for privacy reasons, while Ki was doing the young girl the favor of fixing the hole in the middle of his room, he inadvertently read a page of his diary with certain words that left him thoughtful. Only that again, for his bad luck, an unexpected encounter leads him to be in a bad mood with the only friend he had on the premises. The days pass, and the girl did not cross a single word with Ki who after realizing that now he had screwed up hard, decided to devote himself to studying to bring good results in his practice exams and consequently to regain Nara's trust. Or so he thought, because as expected, he makes a mistake in everything and fails again in the simulator, but with the difference that this was his last chance to save both his career at Tudai and his stay at his grandmother's house. K knew that this was the end of his short good life, only that before leaving he had the slight problem that all the valuables were still in his room, so if he wanted to leave with at least some money, he had to go inside and endure the disappointed looks of his waifus. Shinobu runs into him by surprise, and what seemed like a quiet night ends up turning into a chase to the d which in the end turns completely around when Haruka comes to tell them that questioning a person just because he fails many times is not realizing the real effort he puts behind it. Taking as an example herself, who a couple of years ago was in the same situation as our boy. These words make the attitude of the girls change suddenly, and they all decide to go out to look for him in the middle of the night, but anyway, the only one who finds him is Naru, who, seeing him in front of Tudai, takes the opportunity to fix things and have a moment alone with him where after talking for a while, he finally realizes that his childhood friend, the girl with whom he made a promise to go to college together and get married, was by his side since the beginning of this crazy life. So to confess this to his waifu, he first had to pass the entrance exam, only that before arriving at the institute where he must take the final test, he has certain somewhat shady encounters. But the most important of all is when a strange man comes to save the day and gives him the student ticket that he had to present to collect his form and thus be one step closer to finally fulfill it. Leaving this aside, later that day after giving his best effort to get good result for the two day, we see for the first time Ki happy about his performance, something that Naru could not share because since she left the exam, she was quite restless. It turns out that the morning after they both go to see her application, not only Ki was not accepted, but she had also failed the admission test, making her fall into a strong disappointment that she decided to drown it with few good beers. However, the thing gets even worse when the friend mentions the subject of the promise, the waifu replies, that it is very unlikely that the two talk about the same subject because if we analyze it well, at the time mentioned she was only a two-year-old girl. This is how the couple's world falls apart, and they decide to go their separate ways to clear their minds and go on vacation, but by fate or by a simple mistake, they end up meeting again. And by the way, thanks to an accident in the middle of the train, both share a couple's trip throughout Kyoto, to the point that they have to share the same room. In the end, let's say that things go halfway well between the two of them, since well above misunderstandings or dirty thoughts, they manage to come clean with each other, and thus once again gain that trust so necessary in this relationship that is going to give each other a new opportunity to believe in their abilities. What was not so good was the concern that the rest of the girls had for this crazy couple, so in a desperate attempt for Su Shinobu to know how they were doing in Kyoto, they decided to escape from the others to go look for them by their means, which in the end also involves Motoko. And if that wasn't enough, the supposedly good relationship between the two of them is short-lived, because Naru makes it very clear that the fact that they have reconciled doesn't mean that they have anything beyond friendship, something that somehow reaches Ki, who has already started to develop feelings for her. In the middle of all that, the couple meets Otoheim, a friend of our boy who has also tried to take the entrance exam for the two-day, 
but for one mistake or another ended up failing and now with this one he has already accumulated four years in a row without a positive result. Ironically, these two are too much alike in the sense that they are brutes and the only thing they do well is to make Naru stress. As if that were not enough, they are also part of a misunderstanding that Kano and the crazy girl with the katana interpret as a lover's getaway, which was the opposite because they only wanted to take the waifu to her home in Okinawa, but by fate they end up getting into a trip to a completely different district. In the middle of all this confusion of trips and unexpected encounters, finally, the little group embarks back to the main city, where Odoheim not only takes the opportunity to tell Ki that he should start thinking about his feelings for Naru, but also says it to her face, thus creating some tension between the two which they cannot fix until after a somewhat hectic journey through the sea, they arrive at a deserted island. It is at this point where in a way our couple decides not to worry so much about the future and better start working on their present, agreeing that from now on they will let what has to happen and that any important decision that affects their lives, they will take it together because even though they are not officially in a relationship yet, the feeling of caring for each other is more than present in their hearts. Something that does not end up being very secret, because as soon as Sue has the opportunity to use one of his shady inventions to see Naru's mind, all the waifus find out that something happened on that island between this pair, but the weirdest thing is the fact that the husbando of the dream is not the same as our key, and if that were not enough, he somehow managed to get his kind of rocket private plane with which he abducts the girl and takes her to school, because today is supposedly graduation day. On the way you meet Sakata, a multimillionaire who studies in the same class, and who besides being very popular among the high school girls, has certain amorous feelings for Naru which is not much use because today is the last day they will see each other face to face and from tomorrow, they will be strangers who will take different paths. However, Sakata's presence makes Ki worry about the future of his relationship with the waifu, who to his bad luck, just gets on the same train that she was with Kano, thus destroying his hopes of being able to invite her to have a date for her graduation. And as if that were not enough for this is added the fact that we see in her an expression of concern or sadness that finishes off poor Ki even more. Since by this point our boy was accumulating too many problems, he decided to start solving them one by one, such as apologizing to his classmates for not passing the two-day exam. Once solved most of these problems, the group only has to focus on the most important one, to find out what is going on with Naru and why she has been so these days. But this Sue uses again his weird invention which in the end shows nothing interesting and also just arrives at Sakata's meddling to interrupt, so everything remains a little inconclusive. The husband confesses to the waifas that he is here to take his partner, showing them in the process a supposedly perfect mega plan to make her fall at his feet. But seeing that the thing was too much of a fight between the two buns, they better devise a duel where the first one, who manages to conquer her, will be the winner of having a date without anyone interrupting them. The slight drawback of this challenge was that they were simply reflecting their thoughts through Sue's device, so the result was not 100% real, and also the perceptions and feelings that each one had were mixed, in short the fight was useless, because it is very difficult to try to guess what another person feels based on assumptions. After a while, Naru comes down to see what all the fuss is about, and after learning about the situation, she decides to choose the winner, which surprisingly was key explaining that the best way to deal with the sadness of having finished school and not knowing what to do with her life is to go play with her friends at an amusement park, ending with the fact that of the two, the one who can understand her better is the person with whom she lives day after day under the same roof. Leaving all this mess aside, sometime later, Motoko's fans tell her that in recent weeks, they have noticed changes for the worse in her personality since she is not the same serious and strong-willed woman she used to be, but now she is a little softer, assuming that this could be the result of spending most of the day next to a man. These words leave the crazy girl with a katana thinking that to get out of doubt better ask Naru for advice about Ki, but she doesn't love him much either, so instead of helping her, she only ends up closing her criteria about him even more. Things get even worse when in a kind of weird meditation dream, Motoko imagines a fictional story where she faces a supposed dragon king who in reality is just a chubby, ugly guy who wants to marry our waifu to satisfy his dirty tricks. But first she will encounter Ki in the form of a turtle man, Sue, who for some reason had an ostrich as a companion and a small Kano and Shinobu, who were on top of a frog and a salamander. After walking for quite a while, they arrived on Inada's house, who this time was a sorceress who provides them with powers and equipment for the battle with the bad guy of this story. The half-redeemable of all this joke is that, at least, Motoko retains her superhuman strength and can easily defeat the first enemies that try to stop them, giving them passage to the Lake of the Giant Turtle, which is the only option they have if they want to reach the Dragon King's castle. Once in the place, the little ones rush in and get trapped under the effect of the fortress, so everything is left in the hands of the crazy girl with a katana, who with a single cut manages to reveal the true identity of the evil fatty, which in this case was her sister, 
It turns out that from the beginning of this crazy journey, we were always living her dream, which is something strange to understand because it is a mixture of everyone's memories, which shows us how she does not want to get away from the life she likes, and that maybe that old, cold, and aggressive personality was not 100% her true self. The next morning, everything was back to normal, each of the waifus was doing her own thing and Key was still forced to fulfill the tasks of the compound by himself, in short, a normal day like any other or well, so it seemed because after a few hours, when Key was back in his room to rest for a while, he realized that his money was missing and worse, none of the girls on the floor had noticed if it flew out the window or someone took it without permission. To Kano, this seems very suspicious, so he decides to get into his role as a detective and start solving this case from the root. Their first stop was in Naru's room, who was also looking for something important, but they didn't pay much attention to him and proposed to inspect the bedroom of each person, to rule out and prove their innocence one by one. The little group wanted to finish checking the waifu's closet, but she nervously tells them that they can't see anything she has there, so to rule her out as a suspect they ask her to give them a clue as to where they can find the person responsible, which with pure logic makes them realize that it is only a matter of analyzing that the hole in the floor only serves to go down, not to go up. With this in mind, we go directly to Shinobu, which was not responsible, but it helped them to connect the events a little better, and they managed to create more or less an outline of the people who were at the time of the crime, leaving Motoko and Haruka as the last options. First, they go to the crazy girl with the katana, who, as expected, reacts aggressively and reminds Ki that her aunt is not responsible either, since they were both at the entrance of the enclosure when all this happened. In the end, they better go eat some curry, until out of nowhere, Sue stops and tells them that she has managed to deduce the case, confessing that the only tenant they have not taken into account is the turtle, since being so small and mischievous, it could have easily entered through the window and eaten the money that was in the envelope. As they had no other way to check it, they proposed that they should capture the animal and check its stomach for evidence, only that Naru and Ki steal it before they do something stupid, and what began as a joke mystery ended up becoming a tremendous chase, which in the end does not last long because Sue makes them fall into a pond that leaves them trapped in the middle of a hot spring. The waifus corner the couple, but Haruka comes at once to clarify all this fabricated story and reveals that the responsible from the beginning was Kano, who devised the whole plan to grab some money, and then wish he can return it, only that due to certain unforeseen events it did not work out well, creating this tremendous misunderstanding, where anyway they blame our boy for being so absent-minded. And as a piece of information, later that same day they reveal that what Naru had been looking for and hiding since they entered her room was the little picture she had taken with her husbando in the escapade they had weeks ago. That same night, while Ki is trying to sleep a little bit, someone by surprise gets into the same feudin, at first thinks it is his main waifu, but after trying to have a happy moment with her, he realizes that it is Sue, a tremendous scandal is made that gathers the rest of the girls. In the middle of all this commotion, we can hear that the little girl was dreaming about her Oni-chan, who was already in the city because, in the middle of the night, she got a shady encounter with Sakata. Hours later, she explains that in her family she has two older brothers, a woman and a man, but as the three are too similar in their features and hair color, each one can be misunderstood or confused, and so it is with the accusations of the handsome man who claimed to have run into Sue in the street. He is not going to stand idly by, so he decides to start an investigation to find the person responsible and thus prove the innocence of his partner. But at the end of the day, he fails to find anything relevant. However, just when he was about to give up, he noticed something that would completely change the problem. That same night, with a red moon in the background, he sees above the house a young girl with the same appearance as Sue. Only this one is a little older and does not call them by name to talk to him. The thing is that when the boy wanted to go upstairs to talk to her for a while, there was no one on the roof and even worse, the little girl was in her room all this time, making us realize that this is a completely different person from the crazy girl in the jungle. The next morning, our boy continues with his investigation about this mysterious woman, but after hearing a lot of from his friends, who thought that Sue was a magical girl and all that, we finally meet one of the two sisters, only she is, besides having a crocodile as a companion. She is a bit aggressive when she sees Key. After a while, Naru rescues her husbando from almost going with the one upstairs and once in the house, we see that all this mess of Oni-chans and various personalities is because of the red moon because apparently it causes Sue's body to react strangely and she becomes a more adult waifu and not so crazy. As a result of this, her older sister, whenever this little problem happens, goes to look for her to keep her under control, only this time she is also there because according to what she tells us, she had run away from home to come to live in the city. It is at this point when the girl explains that because Kay reminded Sue of the feeling of family, the little girl's heart was divided in two. The one that is where part of her childhood and rebelliousness is, and the other that encompasses more her maturity and self-control. According to her, 
Ki is the only person who can interfere with her little sister's body becoming corrupted by this personality problem. So she suggests that instead of killing him, they should get married and create a facade to return to live happily in the desert. So if her little group of friends interferes in her shady plans, giving our boy the perfect opportunity to say the right words to the little girl, finally calming her adult personality and returning her to her more rebellious state, who by the way does not remember anything of what happened, not even the fact that a relative of hers was visiting. Leaving aside the family moment, a couple of weeks later, for the benefit of the plot, we see a kind of idol contest, where all the waifus participate, and in the end, Naru ends up being the winner, thus obtaining the title of representative of the city of Hinata, something that no way worries Ki, because let's say that this would be like a jump to fame of the young girl, so very unexpected things can happen, especially if Sakata is the main involved in this alleged game of pubescent. The fame of our little girl is expanding so fast, that not only has she already had her picture on the cover of several magazines, but she has also made it to television, and if that wasn't enough, now she even has her CD with a very touching song about the passing of time and self-improvement. In a matter of hours, thanks to the handsome guy's influence and a little extra money through his agency, Naru became a celebrity, leaving aside her peaceful life in the precinct, which as expected saddens Ki, who sees more and more distant the possibility that the two can go together to the two-day. Anyway, the live shows don't end, so the wife who has to temporarily move to a hotel near the show, but here the important thing is that while Ki is telling her friends that she has a dream about her future, Kano makes a revelation that would leave the friend completely cold. It turns out that Naru once told her that in high school she had fallen in love with her teacher, and that in fact, it was him to whom she promised to enter the university in Tokyo, so they could continue together and try something more than a simple professional relationship. Only that in the middle of all this mess, the girl lost contact with her sensei, and since that blow of reality, she no longer feels the need to have to go to the two-day, being this the reason why she has begun to explore new paths, such as being an idol. Or well, we thought so, because after a while, while Ki was taking a bath to assimilate all this revelation, Naru comes to hide from Sakata, explaining that this new superstar life is too exhausting because having so many things to do a single day, sometimes she doesn't even have time to sleep or eat something halfway decent. Not to mention that the paparazzi are a tremendous nuisance that does not respect the girl's privacy. So at the same time that the handsome guy grabs Shinobu and Motoko to turn them into temporary idols, while the main waifu appears, our couple has a date on the sly, which serves more for her to vent all the pressure she feels, confessing that lately she has lost her self-confidence because apart from the fact that her mother has a new family and hardly cares about her well-being, what hurts her the most is feeling that she no longer has anyone who loves her, thus remembering the painful moment of her youthful love. He doesn't know how to find the right words to talk to Naru, and by mistake he says something he shouldn't have, and the promise he had with his sensei comes out, which leaves the girl confused, who later tries to confront him, but instead of fixing the situation, they only end up arguing and making everything worse. To her good luck, a hidden paparazzi catches the moment when they fight, and that's why the waifu the next morning can return to her normal life, since the company she worked for, after seeing her bad image in the news, decided to fire her and finish her idle career in silence, which in a way is good, because this way Naru can remind Ki that above all the promises of the past, they also made one to each other, where they swore that next year they would enter the two died together, and that this is only the beginning of this long road. Later that same day, Motoko receives a package from her older sister, where we see a very nice kimono, but apparently, she doesn't like it and she puts it back in the box. Ironically, the letter that came with the clothes said that now the crazy girl with the katana must be a super mature woman and not afraid of anything, but this is not entirely true since there are things that scare her or make her nervous, such as turtles or attitudes that Ki gets without realizing it. In this case, the poor animal will be the one who will Toko for a while, but the good thing happens when after running out of clothes to wear because all of them smell and the rest are in the dry cleaners, the young girl has no choice but to fall in the hands of Kano and wear various outfits between tender, happiness, and strange, which in the end do not end up selecting anything because she just faints when she runs into the little turtle. In the middle of her subconscious, she shows us a kind of memory in which her older sister gave her her katana and the family's legacy as a warrior, which in a way disturbs the waifu, as she does not feel capable of carrying the Shinmai style correctly. This pressure makes Motoko run out of the house, and without realizing it, she arrives at the center of the city, where Ki saves her from some st but fails to prevent the rest of the people from seeing how pretty she is in her new dress, or well, we thought so, because in a short moment of lucidity, the crazy girl decides to change clothes with Ki, so she can stop attracting the attention of men and return calmly to the premises. However, while everyone was focused on the problem of the girl and her clothes, no one noticed that the thieving turtle began to take things out of the house, so in less than a minute they put together a somewhat strange idea to find the nest where the animal was hiding all her belongings. Based on deductions, the group uses the sensual Motoko as bait, and once they get her to take the bait, it is only a matter of following her to her lair and executing the rest of the plan. With this, and thanks to an invention of Sue, 
They can locate the secret passage through which she was executing her robberies. Fortunately, they managed to find the garbage warehouse, which was guarded by a robot turtle that can shoot fire from its mouth, and in a few cases is almost indestructible. According to Sue, the only way to stop this thing is to activate the self-destruct mechanisms it has inside, and the small problem is that this would be almost the same as detonating a nuclear bomb, and as if that were not enough. As a result of Motoko's crisis, her skills with the katana are nullified, leaving the friends at a tremendous disadvantage. So now everything is in the hands of our crazy girl. In a moment of empowerment, where the waifu almost gives up on her new feminine look, these words activate Motoko's serious mode, and she gets off the robot in one fell swoop and saves the day, returning the belongings to their owner and giving us a nice scene of the young girl in her familiar kimono. Days after the incident, Kana was bored in her room, but when she heard that in the next room, both Ki and Naru were going over the topics of the exam, she had the idea to open a hole in the wall and gossip for a while to see what things can happen between the couple if they are left alone for too long and to top it off, Sue and Shinobu joined this plan who was also curious to appear the study session of these two. However, the joke doesn't last long because apart from Ki almost stealing a kiss from the waifu, the waifu instantly notices the holes and complains to the girls for spying on other people. Later that same day, the two girls were left with doubt why the boy didn't go for it without thinking so much, to which Motoko tells them that this kind of gesture is only done with a special person. But when they tried to inquire more about it, the crazy girl sent them away because she was ashamed to reveal things about her fantasies. Anyway, the next morning, Shinobu takes the opportunity to talk to her school friend about what happened at the school, but instead of being calmer with all this kissing and displays of affection, she ends up developing fantasies with our boy, and as if that were not enough, Kana gives her a lipstick, unleashing even more her curiosity for adult topics. To her good fortune, more or less, the little girl can talk for a while with the couple, who reassures her by telling her that when she finds the right person to share this kind of thing with, when she touches her heart, she will know it, and it will only be a matter of giving each other so that, in this case, she doesn't bother your husbando. In a way, Shinobu understands what they mean, only that she gets very nervous when Ki mentions the subject of lipstick and runs out of the place without being able to clarify the misunderstanding. In the end, the young girl goes to sleep and the next morning she receives the pleasant surprise that both her friends come to visit her to take advantage of the weekend and play for a while, or well, that was the intention because again one of Sue's weird inventions comes into action and instead of having fun, makes Shinobu run away and avoid at all costs having to talk about kissing and those adult things. It is at this point where the poor little girl feels tremendous pressure for being the only one who has not yet found the right person to show her love, so as it seems that the best option at the time was Key, she decides to take him to the terrace to ask him to do her the favor, but a terrible accident ruins the moment and now really leaves the young girl sad, because she has just lost her only chance to have something special. After a while, Sue confesses that all this mess was because of the drawing she made in her notebook, in which it is clear that her dream was to share a kiss with Key, and that's why she tried to do everything possible to make him get it. But she didn't see that by forcing the situation so much, she ended up hurting her only friend. Thus, between tears and smiles, both forgive each other for not having been clear from the beginning about what they wanted, and by the evening, they share a bath in the hot springs, where we see how even though time passes and being an adult is something that cannot be avoided, their childhood essence will always live in their hearts, and sometimes it will be what gives them back that happiness in difficult times. However, all this excitement and joy ends when the next morning, Haruko arrives at the house with the bad news that they will have a budget cut, since in the end, so many days of partying and fuss made the enclosure a debt of 67,000 yen, and if not enough, if they do not collect this amount in less than three days, all basic services, such as electricity or water, would be suspended to cover the required value. Amid all this despair, Keg tells them that he knows a job with which he can earn some quick money, or well, that was what his friends made him believe, because in reality it was to be a mangaka's assistant, and so that lifestyle is very busy for someone as lazy as our boy. After a few hours, he gives up only his fear of losing Naru and the rest of the waifus, makes him accept the service of a witch who was supposed to help him with the money, but in the end, she was just one of his friends in disguise who wanted to earn some money to quickly meet his quota, and thus did not have to worry about looking for a job. Ironically, he is reunited with the crazy guy in the van who saved him on his sissate day, so here we meet Seta Noriyasu, a teacher at Tudai and Sarah McDougal, his little daughter with serious anger issues. Key tells Sensei about his economic problems and how desperate he is to find something fast, to which he offers to work as his assistant and without hesitation accepts. But apart from this rare encounter, we see that Kano has some kind of connection with this man, finally revealing that Seta is the same teacher that Naru was in love with in her teenage years, and now that he is back there will be a tremendous love problem, where the most affected may be the poor Key. Literally to her bad luck, just the way few enters the scene because she managed to get a job as a cheerleader in the university's baseball team, so from here begins a run and run where Kano, 
will try to do everything possible to make the meeting of these two as normal as possible, or if it is in his hands, better that it doesn't happen. While Ki is put to clean bones and old relics of Sensi, Naru is already in his new part-time job, which for one thing or another ends up changing back to a maid service that has the tube, since let's say this is the best option to keep it separate from the offices of Sita. It is at this point where we learn that all the girls from the compound are at the university, with different clubs or errands, but here the important thing is that Shinobu sent the girl to the archaeology department, so the encounter would be almost inevitable. However, Kano arrives just in time, and after several distractions and misunderstandings, manages to get the waifu out of the place before she realizes the presence of her former husbando, which in the end is not much use because later that day, Ki calls to apologize for all the problems and to see if he can give her a second chance to work as an assistant, to which Seta accepts without hesitation. And that's how the story of these continues the next morning, or well, more or less because in the middle of an excavation, the sensei falls into some kind of ruins. But for the moment, we will focus on the enclosure where we see that Ki is with Sarah by orders of his father, that already at first, Naru is delighted with how cute is the little girl who even takes her to her room and invites her some tea. So the dwarf takes the opportunity to annoy Ki as much as she can, and in a way, she manages to do it several times, only that in one of those, she takes out the photo they took during the escapade they had months ago and what was supposed to be an awkward moment became a kind of confession of the couple, until again the unbearable Sarah interrupts them and they can't finish talking nice about their feelings. At that, the rest of the waifus run into the young girl, Akano quickly remembers that when they were working in the Tudai, this girl was with Sita, so he gets down to work to try to keep the problems away from Naru's life. To their bad luck, in the middle of the chase, the little group arrives at a door that was kept sealed for many years, and which conveniently turns out to be the exit of the same ruins in which Seta had fallen that same day. The waifu gets to see face to face with her high school teacher, only she gets so nervous that she even stops calling Ki by his name implying that in a way our boy is not welcome in this conversation. The husbando takes the opportunity to explain that he was lost for two years in jungles and deserts, and for this reason he could not contact the young girl, but here the real damage was already done, Kei was heartbroken. Later, Nara wants to talk to him to explain that this sudden reunion left her a little confused, but it doesn't help much because between tears and a fake smile, Kei tells her that Seta is a much better man for her, the little bread takes her to the cave where the teacher and his daughter are supposed to be, but in the middle of the way, between stepping on some traps of the ruins and the rest of the girls also getting into this tremendous mess, the little group gets separated from Naru and by mistake, they arrive to a strange civilization of robot turtles. At the same time that Ki and the rest find the creation room, the waifu run into the lost androids, setting up a chase through the tunnels, which in the end leads them to a end. Motoko sort of tries to solve the problem using her katana techniques, but it only has the opposite effect and now the roof of the place is starting to crumble. After a few hours of trying to find a small hole to escape and not getting any results, Ki, between paranoid and very stupid, reveals that Naru is in love with Sita, to which ironically the teacher says that he also loves her, just as he loves all his students or the people around him. And just before they manage to clarify that it is not about that, but it is their love from puberty, Haruka arrives to save their lives, revealing that all this time they were under his restaurant and that this hole is used to throw the waste of the place. In the end, this topic was left aside because in the evening, the two of them took a bath, but anyway, the waifu and Ki were left thinking about what they had just experienced. This is reflected in the following days when Ki finds it difficult to talk to the girl, not necessarily because they are angry, but more because he doesn't want to interfere in her life and feelings. However, Kizan arrives to save the situation again, as she needs staff to work in the tea house she has on the beach, and incidentally allows them to enjoy some much-needed time together. It is here where they reveal to us that our friends will be participating in a kind of play that in short tells us the legend of the Monkey King, a story where the Emperor embarks on an adventure with a bunch of semi-human monsters who seek forgiveness from the goddess in exchange for leaving aside the that gradually consumes their inner self, or well, that's more or less the idea, because due to a small accident they did not finish the show, and now they have no place to continue with the play, and as if that were not enough, Seta appears on the scene, so the problems begin to accumulate for poor Ki. The nice guy tells them that in the middle of his exploration he found a kind of ancient theater, offering them the place so they could work without major inconvenience, at first they must comply with only one condition. It turns out that the teacher asked them to change roles and slightly modify the story, to now tell the legend of a demon king who is holding Naru hostage, and who plans to eat her unless our heroes do something to stop him. The dilemma here is that things get out of control and the fun presentation ends in a sucky fight between Siga and Motoko, which accompanied by Sue's inventions, 
makes a huge mess in the ancient ruins. For the convenience of the plot, the crazy girl with the katana is defeated, and leaving the cicadas meddling aside, now the demon king and Kay will have to fight to see who will be truly deserving of keeping the waifu. Which is a good husbando, our boy stands up hard and challenges him to a duel at a complete disadvantage. As expected, Kay screws up in the middle of the epic moment, where after receiving a blow from Narud for being an the couple receives the recommendation of a girl from the audience who mixes this Japanese play with the story of Cinderella, thus pushing them to share a kiss. Which in the end does not happen because due to the explosion of the fight, a hot spring opens and the story is left unfinished. However, not everything is bad in this situation, since in a way this vacation made the trust in the couple's relationship return a little to what it was before said as appearance, giving us a good sign that at some point one of the two will take the step to clarify their feelings towards each other. The next morning, the little group is as if nothing, attending normally in the renovated place and gaining much popularity for the newly discovered hot springs, but one of Otoko's followers does not like this at all. So much so that later confronts and confronts her about how she used to be a pure person who had no contact with any man and now lies and interacts with them as if it were normal. Even judging the way she dresses, accusing her of being a soft and degenerate woman. These words leave the crazy girl with a katana thinking, only to be interrupted by a message from her clan, who asks her to protect an exorcist, who will soon arrive to seal a demon that is wreaking havoc. The thing is that while she embarks to the appointed place, he's half-witted friends show her the supposedly perfect plan for her to have her moment of courage with Naru, and finally be able to confess without anyone interrupting, so in a way, Motoko and Ki's path ends up crossing on the same island. Thus, after a few hours, the waifu runs into her friends on the possessed ship. But here, the important thing is that the couple has already started their journey through the area, which at first does not go very well because the little bread is easily frightened, and as if that were not enough, the fools of her friends release the skull demon, complicating things even more. At first it seemed that with his katana they managed to defeat the spirit, but later at home they realize that it is not true since for some reason this possessed Naru, and according to what they explained to us, the soul of the evil woman who seeks to kill the men who betrayed her when she was alive has returned, and to her bad luck, the only way to seal it again is with an ability that only Motoko's sister has managed to master. Sue proposes to try to learn the exorcism technique, and even our boy offers to be the test dummy, all to save his waifu and bring her back safe and sound. However, after several unsuccessful attempts and many beatings with no effect, the friends tell him that his lack of strength is probably because his heart uses hate instead of love, and to his bad luck, he had better get his act together with Motoko because Naru wasted no time in claiming his first victim. The problem is that the young girl knows well who to attack because she takes advantage of Ki's feelings to lure him into her trap. But in a way, this becomes her weakness since having her husband in front of her, doing his usual The control collar is breaking little by little, which gives the perfect opportunity to the crazy girl with the katana to concentrate good thoughts and launch a blow strong enough to break the curse of the two waifus. Because yes, the friend who criticized her for being weak was also possessed by the demon of suffering. In the end, they all enjoy a bath, relax, or well, more or less, because the next morning while Haruka gives them their pay for all these weeks they helped in the store, Naru is very toxic. Just to make Ki jealous, tells Sarah that she wants to see her dad, who ironically just arrives at the place and agrees to go out later with her, because it so happens that today is the summer festival. So Kana knows what is going on, so when they are changing into their kimonos, he takes advantage of the moment to show the waifu that his true feelings are for our boy, and not for Sita, because if it were this way, it would not make sense for her to be jealous of Ki going out with other people. Anyway, Shimobu just interrupts, so the topic is left in the middle, however, here the important thing is that by chance we learn that the teacher will soon go on excavation to some very dangerous ruins, which in a way is good for the couple, but bad for Sarah, who does not want to leave her father's side, much less stay with the boys in the compound. It is from this point on that while trying to keep Naru from discovering that Seta is leaving the country soon, the little girl looks for a way to make a big fuss, so that Ki and her friends don't want to take care of her, literally even using Sue to carry out her plans, getting stranded on a deserted island for being a joke. Also leaving aside the fact that Ki has both good and bad moments in his few encounters with his waifu, Kano comes clean with Sakata and confesses that in school she also fell in love with the teacher, and that maybe this is the main reason why she doesn't want him to end up with Naru, and so far she has done everything possible to avoid it, using as an excuse that she seeks the happiness of the little bread, when in reality she only wants her own. At the end of the day, she only uses this moment to find out where Seta is, to which the handsome guy reveals that she never ran into him, but saw the girls getting on a boat heading to the unknown island, so the young girl has no choice but to go to his rescue. Back at the festival, Shinobu, pure of heart, thanks our boy for having spent this time by her side, but right there, she tells him that she would prefer him to reconcile with Naru, so they can enjoy the fireworks side by side. 
In the middle of all this confusion at the same time that Sarah confesses to Kano that she has such a hostile attitude because she doesn't want any woman to approach her father, he is reunited with his waifu and Haruka shares a tender moment with Sita since they met when they were just kids. This delivers a nice musical scene, which after a few hours, puts an end to the misunderstandings. The couple has their moment, Kano can start to be sincere with her feelings and everyone enjoys a tender family moment under the moonlight. With this, the summer vacation is over and the whole group returns home to resume their daily activities. But for some reason, Su, even though it is daytime and there is no red moon forecast, transforms into his mature version, and to top it off, something strange happens to Ki, because he does not speak normally and he is more tan than usual. Anyway, Nara goes in search of Amala, the little girl's older sister, who to everyone's surprise was accompanied by Otoheim, who supposedly came all the way to Tokyo to take her college entrance exams. After a while, the waitress arrive at the enclosure, where we see the strange version of our friend, more agile, friendlier and not so stupid, or well, we thought so, because in reality, Amala reveals that this is the crown prince, Ramboru, and that the real key is a hostage because of a confusion since being on the beach for so long, he got a tan just like his majesty. Once this slight problem is solved, we go to the real problem, as it turns out that the husbando is in the process of ascension to the throne, but cannot be officially named king until he gets a wife, and this is where Su comes in, who has been running away from the commitment during all this time, and if you add to that the fact that she is constantly changing between girl and adult, it's a big mess between siblings. In the middle of all this, the young girl arrives at the ceremony site and tells the prince that she will agree to marry him if he manages to beat her in a duel, which at first seemed like a good idea, but the husbando was too good at dodging the attacks of his robots, and in the end, Sue has no choice but to run out of the venue. Kanem comes up with the silly idea of setting a trap for the girl, making her believe that all the waifus are going to marry the prince, and thus forcing her to express her true feelings about the engagement. However, before moving on to Her Majesty's conversation with Ki, Nuru asks Otoheim how she differentiates our boy from Ramba if they are the same, to which she confesses that it is very easy to identify the person you have been in love with all your life, leaving the wife you thoughtful about the past of these two. Now back with her friends, Ki tells His Majesty that he should wait for Sue to enjoy what little childhood he has left and then marry her when she is a real adult. But he explains that this is not possible because he does not have time as it turns out that in his country young people have to do military service regardless of their social class, and that in his case he only has a couple of years left to join the ranks. K understands his point of view and agrees to help in the plan so that Ramba can have his engagement and thus complete the coronation ceremony. It turns out that the prince knows that as his sister is quite impulsive, he will try to kidnap our boy to blackmail him with the theme of the wedding. But in the end, it turns out the opposite for the husbando as it turns out that Suv has long since realized that Amala had developed amorous feelings for him. She confesses that this is why she did not want to accept the marriage since she prefers to respect her sister's feelings instead of just intervening in something real, and by the way, she tells us that she can also differentiate him from Ki, because at the end of the day, each one's heart is unique. This is how the Desert family somehow manages to clarify the issue of maturity and wives, where leaving aside that by mistake on their trip home they take Ki, instead of the real prince, they can have a happy ending, and more importantly, the little girl can still enjoy the little childhood she has left before being queen, but that's a story for another time. The next morning, everyone goes back to their normal lives, including the couple, who resume their practice for the two-day entrance exams, only this time they have the help of Otoheim. However, the study session is interrupted by Sarah and Sue, who find some kind of secret passage that sent them to the desk drawer, and now they are stranded in a place not yet explored by the two, but that both Ki and her friend feel somewhat familiar. The little group begins to walk through the corridors of the house until the little bread stumbles upon a room containing an evil doll, which embraces him without hesitation. To top it off, it can talk and has a kind of consciousness of its own. Our innocent boy takes it home to clean it, which the waifus don't like because not only does it move on its own and can communicate, but it also shows certain intentions of keeping the bun. Sarah explains to us that these relics are known as wind-up dolls, and that only certain rich people can buy one because they have very complex mechanisms inside. We finally meet Mo a toy that has been kept in the hot spring compound since the time Hina, Ki's grandmother, but which has a very special connection with the Urashima family. The problem is that according to Hina's diary, this doll is more than 100 years old, so it has the risk of becoming the bearer of a demon, or at least that's what the crazy girl with a katana assumes. While the waifus debated what was the best way to deal with this little inconvenience, our boy noticed that the mechanisms of her legs were somewhat defective, so he proposed to Mo to repair it, which helps when she remembers a very similar conversation she had with her grandfather in the past. It is at this point that the girls light up and ask Motoko if they can break the curse, once the demon feels they have fulfilled their promise, 
to which she tells them that this is also a possible way to practice exorcism. The little group wastes no time and Sue and Sarah get to work on their operation, so that after a few hours, the little rope toy recovers its ability to walk, leaving us with an emotional scene of Key hugging Mo and above all, fulfilling the promise that his old man made many years ago. The next morning, we see how everyone's life changes with the arrival of a new family member, even Odohai and Naru and Ki play with her. Only in the middle of this moment do move to a kind of memory in the doll's mind that only the waifu can see. Here we relive the moments she spent with both the grandfather and the little bread, every one of the feelings and promises they made over time, but especially the commitment that someday they would be a couple, something that now no longer makes sense to her because she has realized that her boy has already found love. And so, with these tender words, Moan embraces his husband for the last time and turns off forever, releasing the spirit he kept inside, and consequently, becoming again the lifeless toy that will be kept in the heart of the Hinata enclosure. The next morning, the waifu decides to dress up a bit to see if this way she can lift Ki's spirits after everything she experienced. But as usual, Kano comes to put dirty thoughts in her head and now she is wary that in this kind of date, things can get out of control. Anyway, we go to the read place where we already see the possible problems that may come to torment the couple, such as being criticized for the fact that a nerd is dating a young girl as beautiful as Naru. Ironically, since our boy has almost no female contact, he does not know how he should treat her or it should take her for a walk or to eat. And as if that were not enough, Sakata appears to interrupt and steal the waifu or well, he was trying to because apparently, a mysterious person is watching over the two so that no one interferes with their date and everything can flow normally. Leaving aside that in the middle of the way they run into Motoko, Shinobu, and Su, and also that Ki almost runs out of money for inviting her to a very expensive restaurant, Naru misinterprets an action of her husband and shows us how little by little she's imagining the romantic things of her future. But this time, Ki just wanted to take her to take a picture to keep the memory as an Okinawa, revealing that today is six months of their anniversary, and for this reason, he wanted to do something special for this important person in his life. But in the end, they cannot finish clarifying this because of their bad luck. Otohain happens to be wandering around and right in front of them, so they have no choice but to take care of her while she regains consciousness. After the young girl gets well, they play bowling for a while and go to her house to try the kotatsu she just bought. There comes a revelation that would leave Naru very thoughtful about the relationship between these two supposed friends. It turns out that Otoheim, despite having already failed the entrance exam four times, is still trying to get into today because in her childhood she promised the boys she liked that they would meet again at the same university and spend the rest of their lives together. The problem here is that since that was a long time ago, she has forgotten the name and face of that person. So now she can only wait for fate to do its thing and give them their long-awaited reunion. The waifu remains somewhat thoughtful because she feels that she has heard this story before but does not give it more importance and the next morning, while they are taking a bath of the most normal, again they run into Ki's friend. This time she came straight to ask our boy for a date. Ki, even though inside he knows that this will provoke the jealousy of a certain person, has no choice but to accept and later that day decides to go for a walk around the city with the small detail that he has three stalkers behind his back. Because yes, apart from Naru, the mysterious girl and Kanem join the gossip. The new couple shares a quiet afternoon, they even take a boat ride where they almost kiss. But in a way, Ki is confused, because every time he remembers his promise of the two day, he sees his friend and thinks about his future. In all these moments, he has his waifu present, which in a fit of jealousy, sends a tremendous chase through the middle of the lake, which in the end is even with the entry of his Kano. After a while, when the little group was on their way to the enclosure, Otoheim approached Naru and asked her what she would think if the person of her childhood had turned out to be key, something that shocked the girl, who with a look of sadness sees how her husbando will most likely be stolen. And if that were not enough, it also seems that she will have the mysterious girl against her, who in short turned out to be her younger sister who came to take her back home. Here we meet Naru Segawa Mai, a girl who besides having serious problems with our poor boy is not even directly related to Naru, explaining to us that she is his stepsister, and who incidentally, like her father, does not see the need for her to make such an effort to enter the two-day, since it is preferable for her to return home to continue her supposedly normal life with her family. These words make the waifu so angry that she almost slaps Mai, telling her that she has no right to have an opinion about her decisions because she doesn't know anything about her life, ending up with her not thinking of leaving Tokyo and abandoning her dreams of entering that university. In one of his attempts to try to soften the young girl's heart, we see a photo album where we briefly relive a moment of her childhood, but out of nowhere Sarah and Sue appear in her room because they are again exploring the secret passages of the house and invite Ki, 
to see her wife as a child. In the middle of all this, while Mai warns them that Otoheim has already arrived for the study group, Naru again realizes that both Keys and her friend's motives for entering the two die are the same, which in a way discourages her, because she no longer has a promise to keep. However, leaving aside that Haruka also has her suspicions about the past of this couple, we see that the meddlesome girl send almost perfect plan so that her sister does not show up to the review, and thus leaves these two alone locked in a room. Which to top it off, or well, that was the idea because as I said before, she missed the small detail that the waifu, besides being very toxic, is quite strong, which made it easier for her to break the boards that were on her floor and thus intervene before the dirty things happen. Mei, seeing that she failed, asks for help from the crazy Kano, who despite being technically on Naru's side, decides to give her a hand in her plans because according to her, this could end up in something interesting. The duo gets down to work and organizes a potato festival where while one of them is well-dressed, the poor waifu has to wear high school sports clothes, all to lower her attractiveness so that the guy only concentrates on one of the two of them. The problem is that Su put Naru's favorite stuffed animal in the soup, and by chance Otoheim found it first, confessing that she had a toy just like it when she was little, but that one day she gave it to a girl in her neighborhood and never saw it again. Ironically, the three of them remember the anim that tells the story of this doll. So Mi's plan is completely turned upside down to avoid it. She decides to give some alcohol to the young girl, causing that now her friends to have to take care of her. After a while, just when Naru was going to look for more ingredients for the potato soup, Haruka, who was around, finally solves what was bothering her so much about Otoheim, as it turns out that she was a childhood friend of Ki. This revelation leaves the waifu very thoughtful, who already in the kitchen, takes advantage of the moment alone with her husband of asking him about the subject, where he gives her a completely different answer, confessing that his reason for entering the University of Tokyo is because he wants to be by her side, and that the girl from his childhood is no longer as important to him as it was a few years ago. Things finally seem to be going well between the little couple, but again, Mei's meddling does her thing, and shows him a photo from the family album in which it is seen that when she was just a child, she already knew Ki and Otoheim, as it turns out that the three of them grew up in the same town since they were little. However, before her sister does another one of her stupid things, she stops her in her tracks and tells her that a few minutes ago she received a call from her parents, who were furious, because they didn't know anything about the Castrosa dwarf. It is here where Naru finally manages to put the pieces together, explaining that Mei's real plan was to take her back to convince her parents to send her to study in Canada, so that everyone can live happily as a family again. But later that day, our boy takes action. He tries to solve the problem, telling her that even though they may fight, have their differences, or distance themselves for any reason, the love of a sister is something that has no limit or end, ending with a tender embrace so that the little girl can unburden herself of all that hatred. The bad thing is that, at the same time that we are shown this touching moment, Naru also manages to find the owner of his stuffed animal, and at the same time the picture of his childhood becomes completely clear, as it turns out that right on the paws of the toy was written the name of Matsumi Otoheim, which means that indeed, the little buns already knew each other a long time ago. From here on, things started to get quite tense. First, the young girl was all night, which made the relationship between the three of them break down second key and her friend are closer than usual because apparently today they will see the results of the practice exams. And finally, there is the issue of the photo to know what Key will do when he discovers the truth, and more importantly, which of the two will choose. This is how after the couple returns to the enclosure with the same results as always, Naru asks Otohine for some time to talk alone, and what better place than the hot springs when the waifu tries to explain the fact that her childhood love may be closer than she imagines, but in the end, between the cluelessness of this woman, and that the gossip in Kamino and the girls also get involved, the story gets tangled, leaving everything in a tremendous misunderstanding. While the girls try to clarify this situation, Mei visits Ki to see if she can help her sister with her feelings, but Haruka interrupts them to tell her that she has a call from her parents, and as if that were not enough, Seda appears at the worst moment, but this time she's accompanied by Hina, the grandmother of the little bread. The teacher explains that he ran into her in the middle of his explorations, and that by request of the lady, they came to visit the premises to see how things were, which to his pleasant surprise is better than he thought, or well, that's what it seems at first, because in reality, inside there are a lot of setbacks, such as the fact that for our boy, it is quite difficult to manage the administration of the place and his studies at the same time. He admits that reality is hard, to which his old lady agrees, confessing that since she arrived, she has realized that they all carry their problems and that no matter how hard they try to escape, it is impossible since even the dreams of each one have its magic of becoming one of them. Later that same day, another dilemma would be added to the life of the friends because it turns out that according to the supervisors of the council, the enclosure will enter the repair process, which in a few words means that they will not be able to live in the place until they finish with all the works and fix the infrastructure. With this in mind, everyone went their own way, some went to spend the night together, others went back to their parents' house, and as for Ki and Naru, they had no choice but to accept Otoheim's offer, who thanks to the time she met Amala, 
Sue's sister, got free apartment. However, before making a decision, Ken realizes that if he takes the waifu, Mai will be left alone, so despite generating a fight and creating another misunderstanding between the two, he asks her to please both return home together, and that he will manage with her friend to survive these days they will be away. Naru in the middle of an internal conflict realizes that she cannot leave without revealing the truth to her friends, so she decides to fly to the place where they were supposed to stay, but when she arrives she sees a scene that for the first time does not make her aggressive but makes her cry. While Kai runs after her to explain what happened, she only has to kiss him goodbye because finally, Odoheim with the photo in her hands has remembered all her past and is ready to tell it to our boy. To understand a little better what happened before this problem, we go back minutes ago when Key was about to lose his job as the administrator of the campus, and he had a problem with his grades with the Tudai exams. So to try to alleviate his sorrows, he decides to take a bath. This was the exact moment when she bumped into her friend as God brought her into the world, and the rest was just a matter of a silly stumble for Naru to finally find them on top of each other. Now back in the present, Key puts all the clues together and after so many years manages to discover that Odoheim is his first love, and consequently, the girl with whom he once made a promise to enter Tokyo University to live together forever. She also realizes this, but instead of rejoicing, she worries about the waifu, who from afar could see how her heart was shattered by losing the only motivation she had to try to fight for her dreams. Anyway, the next morning, the sisters were back to their supposedly normal life, only that both Shinobu and Mai did not believe the story that Naru was fine with abandoning her husbando so easily, so they secretly set to work to give them a chance to at least clear things up. Leaving aside the fact that Su had one of her useless plans and used Sakata as a test dummy, what Shinobu feared came true. Ki made the decision not to return to that place and better to stay and think about her future with her friend. Little by little, each one of the waifu realizes that their lives have changed for the better thanks to the fact that one day they met our little bread, but the only one who cannot accept it yet, and it is partly because she is heartbroken, is Naru, who from the beginning refuses to help them because, for her, this issue is a thing of the past. At the same time that the new couple receives the unexpected visit of Sita, who challenges the boy to a duel, Kana decides to be honest with her friend and tells her personal story of the love she had in high school. Confessing that until now she regrets not having been honest with that person, these words make the young girl put aside her fear and for the first time be honest with herself, but back with the fight, Sarah and the teacher get the opposite effect, and instead of helping, they only put more doubts in Key's head, who is cornered by her past and her present, decides to run away from the place. They all start their search in every corner of the city, but in the end, it is only Naru who manages to find him in the same park where they played when they were children. Our boy shows her the result of his last practice test, and with the little strength he has left, he tells her that he is afraid of not being able to enter the two-day, and that for this very reason, he has been using his promise as an excuse to ignore reality, but that despite everything, he does not want to give up, neither with the university, nor with her, since he is tired of just running away from his destiny. These words release a huge weight on the couple's conscience, getting the way few to give him another chance to start from scratch, and that if he fails, she will be by his side to help him keep trying. And so, with a very nice scene of the two of them running holding hands, they return home where, to their good fortune, the rest of the girls were waiting for him to tell him the news that his grandmother had gone on another trip, and that he would therefore continue to be the manager of the Hinata Inn. Just for the record, that same night, Odohain kind of tries to clarify the story of her childhood, but in the end, she only leaves us with more doubts. It turns out that in reality, she was not the girl of the promise, and that she only played along because she thought it was fun to encourage her friend to fulfill his dreams, revealing that Naru is also not the first love of the boy, and that the real girl still does not appear, so there is still much to discover in the difficult life of our boy. After a couple of weeks, Naru and Mai have to go on a trip to visit the family cemetery, so Kai will have to stay alone for a few days, or so we thought, because by chance we receive the unexpected visit of the eldest of the Oyama family, that is, Motoko's sister. Although the young girl is quite gentle compared to our katana-wielding madwoman, she confesses that she has come here to take her back to the dojo, something for which she is so not prepared, to the point that she prefers to use as an excuse that she is engaged to Key so as not to leave the premises. Secretly, the waifu explains that being the successor of the family, she must inherit the teaching of her school, but the problem is that she is still afraid to do it because she feels that she is not strong enough to lead her own, so just for today, she asks the friends to play along with her in the story of their relationship. However, Tsukuro is not at all stupid, and in the middle of a conversation she has with the lion couple, she asks them to prove their love with various things such as kissing, which by sheer luck they manage to avoid or bathing together, which they also solved in a somewhat peculiar way. Ki asks her why she is so afraid of her sister, to which she replies that leaving aside her fast of kind and loving wife, she is a ruthless warrior who has an incomparable skill with a katana, to the point that it does not even compare with hers and that for this very reason, she fled to Tokyo for fear 
of not meeting the expectations of her family. Ironically, Suruko hears this along with the part where they say that all this is just a lie, thus releasing her fighting spirit and sending herself some fancy moves with which she not only humiliates her sister, but also banishes her from the clan and asks her to give up her sword tomorrow because she is not worthy of the Aoyama surname. This decision impacts Motoko's life so much that literally the next day we see her with a completely different personality, adopting the role of a kind maid only that she still retains certain customs from her past as a Japanese warrior. At first it seemed that things were not going to change so much with this new facet, but after several accidents or simple mistakes of the young girl, we see that she is not fit to be a maid. And as if that were not enough, they end up hitting her where it hurts the most because by accident she hears the comments of the rest of the girls and runs away from the pain of not being what the rest expects. However, the good heart of our boy doesn't care if she is good or not and expresses it with the right words he tells her that she doesn't have to be perfect, that it is enough that she is happy with herself, to which for the first time, we are shown the weak side of Motoko, who even starts to cry and unburdens herself while hugging Ki and asking him what she should do with her life. He tells her that whatever path she chooses, that decision can only be made by her, so after thinking about it for a while, she gets serious, and with a katana that grandmother Hina had stored on the shelf, she sets out to challenge her sister to regain her place in the clan and become an worthy heir to the family again. For plot convenience, the Oyama's dojo was located right in the same cemetery that Naru and Mai were visiting, so they end up finding out the situation anyway, which in short is that if our crazy manages to defeat Suruko, she will accept her conditions and receive her with open arms. But if she loses in addition to being expelled forever, she will have to marry Ki, which so makes the main waifu jealous. But her husbando quickly fixes it with some deep words that she is the only one he wants to marry in the future. Anyway, the next morning, both girls get ready to start the fight until, due to a mistake made by Naru, they draw the forbidden katana, which according to what she explains, guarded a very powerful ghost that they caught several years ago, and that despite not having a very intimidating appearance, it can drain the vital energy of people and thus make their attacks more effective. Matoko realizes that she is the only one who can seal the spirit again, so at the same time that brings to her mind a beautiful memory with her sister. She takes the sword and with a single stroke manages to exorcise the demon. Suruko, seeing this, has no doubt that her little girl has grown up and has the potential to be a worthy heiress of the dojo, so she decides to forgive her, and while they take a bath, they share a few laughs and talk quietly about the great future that awaits our little katana-wielding crazy girl. As time flies by, the entrance exams for this year at Tudai are just around the corner, so our little group must get their act together to fulfill their dream of going to the same university together, because yes, it's Christmas, and this is the last chance Kei has to not be left behind and above all had the chance to be happy next to the person he loves the most. The problem is that Ki, as soon as a few hours after having studied, feels tired and starts to get distracted by any nonsense that comes to his head, something that Naro does not like at all because she is so focused on what she is doing that she even adopts a more serious attitude than usual. It is not until the evening that the waifu decides to go out to get some air in the company of Kano, but as soon as they reach the center of the city, where everything related to Christmas is, the young girl makes it clear that she does not like these dates at all, and not only shows it with words, we can also see it in her expression of sadness when she runs into her husbando. Anyway, the next morning, the curious Sarah and Sue discover that our boy has been working part-time to be able to buy gifts for all the girls in the compound, and that in Naru's room, there is a package, which besides being a nice detail, has a love letter for a certain special person. In the beginning, this seems very exciting for the development of the couple, but once again, Naru's bad attitude makes poor Ki feel down, so Shinobu, in an attempt to encourage him, decides to tell him about what the girls discovered, and to his good luck, he succeeds, but because of the excitement of the moment, he does not see where he is walking and falls from the roof, breaking his ankle. The thing is that his Ki is very dramatic, he thinks that now by showing himself weak, his waifu is going to change his mind about the statement, and although in reality, it is quite the opposite because he even visits him to see how he is, his head starts to fill with negative thoughts, so make desperate attempt to make her not leave without knowing how he feels. He tells her that he loves her, to which the young girl runs away without giving him an answer. It is from this point where the problem becomes much bigger, because the next day we learn that Naru has returned home for a while, and to top it off, she also left taking the gift that was supposed to be for her husbando. The day before the evaluation passes normally, in the morning the boys study the last thing they have left before going to see if they can enter the two-day or not. So each one is on his own, and at night, he goes to pick up his last pay from work and gets ready to buy the gift he had selected for his waifu. All in the hope that after giving the test, he can apologize for being such an asshole. And that's how we finally get to Christmas, only that before we have to go to the institute for the practice exams, where after making a fool of himself for a while and giving his best effort to get a decent grade, Ki along with Odoheim leave the place, only that they can't find their friend anywhere, 
as it turns out that she finished hours earlier than planned and ran out with her gift in hand. However, thanks to the little group of gossips, we see that Naru is on her way to Tokyo, to be more specific, to a luxurious hotel, where we not only see that she is accompanied by Sita, but also that our boy sees her, because yes, he followed her there because he wanted to surprise her to try to fix things and lift her spirits. Here a tremendous misunderstanding arises because on the way out, Shinobu consoles the bun and Naru gets angry to see this, and to top it off, Otoheim comes to finish off the moment with his out-of-place comments. At the same time, Kanano and the rest of the girls discover something in the supposed love letter that makes them run out of the hotel. Motoko gives Naru the gift that Ki had. Prepared for her, revealing that this coat was the same one she saw some time ago in a store, and for which our boy was working tirelessly to give it to her on these dates. Back with Ki, we see that they went to a theme park, but here the important thing is that Shinobu, thanks to her friends, can read the real message that the waifu wrote, where she admits that now she knows that the feeling she had for the teacher in her day was just pure admiration of a teenager to her sensei. In her day, she did like him, but with time, she realized that love is much more essential than being loved and that those feelings can only be experienced with one person, that is, her husbando. Once the whole picture is clear, Ki calls Haruka to ask her if she knows anything about the young girl, to which she tells him that she is waiting for her at Omo's Sando Bridge, or well, that was the idea, because by mistake, Naru left Ki's gift on the train, which so delayed their meeting much more than expected, and she almost interprets it as that they were going to leave him standing up. The good thing is that before jumping to conclusions, a little bread decides to call his aunt again, learning that now he must go to Shibuya Station. So despite being still injured, he takes his crutches and walks to the place. Just for the record, we are shown how the rest of the girls are trying to go back home, because they ended up getting into a lot of trouble for lending a hand to the couple, and literally for some reason, hours later we see good old Shinobu at a manga convention. Now back to the main thing, it turns out that the poor girl goes all wrong. First, she couldn't find the train where she left it, then it slits away just when she had it in her eyes because of an old in short, all wrong, or well, more or less, because for the first time in this story, Sakata is good for something and uses her super sports car to try to reach the carriage. However, going back to Ki, he faints because he's walking barefoot in the snow, but let's say that for his luck, Otoheim arrives to rescue him and for some reason, he has the terrible idea of staying in a love hotel, and to top off this crazy Christmas, the waifu manages to recover her coat, but she gets stuck in the traffic with the worry of knowing that she has the time against her. For the convenience of the plot, just in the car of the handsome guy, there was a minibike, with which Naru will try to get as fast as possible to Shibuya Station, and in turn, finally, Ki's friend is honest with him, and tells him the whole truth about not being a girl of promise and that she only played along because she thought she could help, ending with that despite everything, she just wants him to be happy next to the person he chooses. This is how, with everything against him, the weather, the people, the relaxation of the festivities, and above all, the time our couple, thanks to a reporter who ran into the young girl, manages to have their moment, where Naru can expect her most sincere feelings to finally, after so much trouble and misunderstanding, she admits that she also wants to be by his side forever and live their college life as they promised in their day. With these words, and just in time to receive Christmas, they give us the very good news that Ki managed to get an A in the practice exam, to which the waifu, despite only showing her Tsundir side, is so very happy that little by little the two are building a future together, and what better way to do it than celebrating the new year with all the people who were part of making this crazy relationship possible. Weeks later, spring arrives and for the first time they propose to Shinobu, but since everything is so surprising, she decides not to give him an answer, since she is still very young and has to sort out her feelings for another person who brings her in love. At the same time, we see that the couple's relationship has changed for the better, since now Naru doesn't get angry when her husband does something stupid, and they can even be in the same room without fearing that he'll throw himself at her or want to get out of line. They both talk about the fact that tomorrow is finally in the day they have been waiting for since we are only a few hours away from the real entrance exam to Tudai, and in a way they feel that destiny made them meet after so many years to continue their life together. Only that in the middle of all this, Shinobu and the girls interrupt them, cutting the momentum and making a huge fuss. The next day, the little group goes to the university to take the admission test, where supposedly our boy was more than prepared, but for a silly mistake, and for imagining things that were not, he falls asleep in the middle of the evaluation and just five minutes before delivering, he tries to give his best effort. Minutes later, when the waifus go to see him, they are surprised to find that he is not in the classroom and that there is a note on his desk asking them not to look for him. Ki, desperate not knowing what to do, accepts a job offer in a distant place to try to clear his head and return refreshed, or well, that was the goal. Because he did not read the instructions on the paper, he ended up embarking on a ship with purely muscular man, and in which Sita was also on board, revealing that we are going straight to an island of the turtle civilization. The teacher tries to drag Ki down the same path he followed years ago, to leave everything that matters to him aside, his home, his family, and even the only woman who loved him, 
to go explore the world, but somehow fate does not let our boy fall into that mistake. And in the middle of his anger, he manages to see a note that Naru had left him where he said that if he passes or not, it will not change anything in their relationship because his feelings are stronger. So without thinking twice, he jumps out of the boat, but the good forgot that he does not know anything, only that just when he was about to leave with the one above, a mysterious girl manages to take him to the shore to rest. Here we meet Nayamo, however, before going on to explore the Turtle Island. We briefly return to the compound, where the waifus capture the friends of the friend to see if they get any clue of their whereabouts. Only that just when Haruko is going to use their extreme methods, they receive a call from Sita, who tells them that somehow they reached their destination. But the problem is that this is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Naru, upon hearing this, does not hesitate for a second to prepare his things to go to the rescue of his husband, so he uses another of Sakata's super vehicles. Despite the fact that as soon as they approach the island, an army of flying turtles tries to shoot down the plane, the young girl grabs her suitcase and a parachute and jumps in free fall in the middle of the jungle. At the same time that all this madness happens back in the city, we see that for the moment Otoheim and Naru did manage to pass the entrance exam, or so they made us think at first, because after seeing a face that even they don't believe it, we can dream that our boy also made it. With this in mind, Shinobu happily rejoices a little more, but anyway, she still can't leave those feelings for Ki behind, so behind her friend's backs, she decides to escape to go to the island, but not before taking the three girls Sarah, May, and Sue with her. The more adult members of the group sort of try to stop them from leaving, but in the end, they two join in the exploration, making the problem much bigger. Now back with Ki, we see that Nayamo, in addition to keeping him prisoner, also has the ability to control the will of the turtles in the jungle with his voice. Seda briefly explains that she is the granddaughter of an archaeologist who helped him a long time ago, but to her misfortune, she was orphaned because her grandfather left in search of ancient civilization and never returned, and although many consider him the young girl has faith that someday he will return from the depths of the island. By the way, we learn that Ki apparently promised the girl that he will do everything possible to find her old man, something that Naruto doesn't know, and that's why he chases them all over the place. Her husband who explains to her that to reach the jungle of mirages they must cross the entire desert, but let's say that for the convenience of the plot, the waifu just faints due to dehydration. Meanwhile, we see that at the same time that the girls finally reach the island, and with the help of a giant robot turtle, they go into the jungle. The senpais of the group are also near the place, so the rescue mission to the couple has just begun. Anyway, the important thing here is that Naru managed to wake up and tries to talk to the boy about what happened to him in the test and why he wanted to run away without telling him anything, to which poor Ki has no other choice but to confess that he fell asleep in the middle of the test and only had five minutes to try to solve the first thing he found. And just before fainting, Nayama realizes that after so many hours, they finally reached the jungle of Narajas. The little breads cool off in a waterfall, and while the men of the group prepared the food, they change into bikinis made of leaves from the trees. Later that day, the couple talks about their lost grandfather and the promise they made that when they grow up, they will meet again in the lost paradise, something that touched our boy's heart, and that is why he has done everything he can to make that dream come true. Ironically, this time the waifu is a little more sympathetic and also gets sentimental, so she decides to join the adventure and set off to the turtle civilization. Likewise, the next morning the girls find the oasis, only that as soon as they land, they are cornered by an army of giant turtles, which for their good fortune, is controlled with the powers of Nayamo, who without much more to say, leaves them in a safe place and goes back to the protas. After a few hours, Shinobu tells the rest of the group what he experienced, to which Mei have to proposes to return home because if they have already seen that their friends are well on this island, their presence at this point may be more of a nuisance than a help. So the four of them prefer to stay to fulfill the mission, giving us a nice musical scene of an exploration through the jungle and the desert, because yes, the senpais not only arrived at the place, but they also met Sakata, and they are even using their ship to mark out some of the way. The problem is that, after a while, our little bread boys are disappointed to only find themselves at the end of the island, or so they thought, because thanks to an attack of anger from Ki, they fall directly into the entrance of Paralentis, the lost civilization of the turtles. Nayamo searches everywhere for his grandfather, but gets no response. In the middle of this dilemma, Nero confesses to her husband that she is afraid to see the results of her exam, and that this is why she wanted to have him by her side when she gets her grade, ending with the conclusion that whatever destination they choose, it will be fine as long as they face it together. The bad thing is that he can't finish talking about it, because the statue of the giant turtle started to move by itself, and a tremendous fight breaks out, which for his good luck is evened out, because just in time reinforcements arrive to fight this thing. This is how all together, and thanks to the cute voice of Nayamo, they reveal the true form of the robot, which in reality was just a bunch of magical animals, and in passing they can explain to their friends the touching story of the explorer grandfather. The plan of the protas was to accompany the girl to the end of her adventure, but she, along with a good understanding of Shinobu, 
explained to us that from here on she must continue her journey alone because after all, this has always been her dream. Ki understands perfectly what they want to convey to her, giving us beautiful words about how everyone has their goals and aspirations in this life, in which despite having someone by your side to hold your hand, it is up to you to know when to take that step forward to fulfill it on your own. The girls take advantage of this emotional moment to give them the results of their entrance exams. Whereas we guessed from the beginning our boy after three long years finally got into Tudai along with his wife Yu. Also thanks to this crazy adventure, Shimabu was able to put her feelings in order to reject the boy from her school and choose to stay in love with Ki until she herself feels ready to let him go. Upon returning to the island we find that the long-awaited university entrance day has arrived but as usual, Ki the a had to do one of his tricks and for being so cheerful, he ended up injuring his entire leg. Since his family does not give him faith that he got into Tudai, he has no choice but to leave for a while, and consequently, leave poor Naru alone in her first months as a student. In one of those, one night Kai returns to the compound to which all the girls were happy, but that happiness ends in a second when he gives them a not-so-good announcement. It turns out that in his recovery process, he ran into Sita, who upon seeing his condition, proposed him to skip his first semester of college and better go exploring with him to some new ruins he found out there. Our boy tells them that maybe this is the work of destiny, because he feels that this is really the path he must follow to be happy, and that all that about college and the promise are already things of the past. And so, with nothing more to say, the girls say goodbye to the boy at the airport, and our waifu is once again left without her husbando, and even worse, or well, that's what we thought at first, because soon, for the convenience of the plot, the flight of the couple was delayed a few hours, but anyway, the farewell of the couple was no different, and one could even say that now it was much more painful, especially for Naru, who apparently could not be sincere with what she really felt at that moment. After many months, more or less by the end of August, Odoheim receives the first letter from Ki, which is addressed to her waifu, but the important thing is the unexpected visit of a black cat that talks, and from what we can see, it seems to have taken possession of the young girl's body because after a while we see her acting quite strange with her friends and even her actions and way of speaking have changed. However, this is not entirely true because in the midst of all this scandal, we learn that this is actually a double of the real one. But as the girls did not know anything about it, they begin to chase her thinking that she is her evil version. While the girl was trying to escape from Motoko's attacks, by chance she falls into Ki's room, where to her great surprise, she runs into what we are told is the original girl of Ki's promise, and that now that she is back, she wants to remove all of them from her path in order to keep her childhood love. No matter how much the wafers of the precinct tried to stop her, the skills of this woman were completely superior even in a single move she managed to remove the letter from the friend to Odohan, which in some ways is more than enough for Haruka to discover the true identity of the mysterious young woman. Here we meet Urashima Kanako, Ki's younger sister and consequently the new manager of the Hinata Inn, who not only has a pretty scary attitude but also makes it very clear that if she becomes the boss of the place, our boy will never return to the premises. Later that day, Kanako talks to her talking Kitty Kuro who reveals that the initial plan was just to kick Naru out of the place, but since she was the only one who defended her from the rest of the girls, now she doesn't quite know what to do with the rest of the tenants. The next morning things began to change in the house such as new rules of coexistence, which at first felt very strict, and even Shinobu admits that the place does not feel the same without Ki. At the same time, we see that Naru was left thinking about the revelation that she is the original girl of the promise, and at a certain point, she doubts her feelings and even her future with her husband. So together with the rest of her friends, they decide to put an end to Kanako's administration and wait for the real boss to return to the inn. However, and to their good fortune, the waifus beak her to it, and after carefully reading the book of rules that they had been given, they realize that in one part it says that it is forbidden to enter a certain area of the house, which made them think that maybe that is where the weak point of this girl is, or that at least, there must be something interesting in that room. The problem is that the kindness of our girl kind of plays against her, and she warns Ki's sister about the plan to search the forbidden room to which she even asks her why she is so kind to a simple stranger. Back with the little group, we see that just when they manage to reach the abandoned area, Haruka appears out of nowhere to stop them, or well, that's what Kanako's illusion made us think. Because in reality, this was just a distraction to gain time so that her army of turtle robots can corner the girls. The good thing is that both she and Naru forgot to read Ki's letter, but by this point it was no longer necessary because Ki was finally back home. Leaving aside the fact that in the evening the little bread gives the wrong gifts to his waifus, the reunion of the siblings does not go so well, as it seems that he has already completely forgotten the promise he made to her years ago. Later, Naru also has her moment with her husband, where despite being difficult and at first not wanting to admit she missed him, they almost share their second kiss as a couple, but again, there is something more important that interrupts them and that only Ki can solve. 
It turns out that Kanako was upset to see that her brother was no longer the same as before, and if you add to that the fact that it seems that everything from their childhood together is a thing of the past, she has no choice but to accept the new facet of her Oni-chan and go back to her grandmother's house. Only for the convenience of the plot, just as he was about to leave, he hears a loud noise and without thinking twice he goes back to see what's going on, but seeing that it was simply a training session between Motoko and Ki, he grabs his things again and goes back outside. However, as the young girl supposed, our boy has changed a lot after his trip. Not only he knows how to fight better and has more skill in the kitchen, but now he is a little nicer and not so stupid, something that for some reason makes Kanako's heart jealous, which in the end decides to stay and declare a war of love to Naru, and that Ki's sister tries on more than one occasion to him. Apparently, all the girls fell right into her game, which turned out to be a very elaborate trap, so that she and her Oni-chan can be alone all day. But she didn't count on the fact that our girl has superhuman strength. The problem here is that Kanako doesn't understand why Naru gets in the way of her plans if she herself admits that she doesn't feel anything or have any special relationship with him. She realizes that she is not being 100% honest with herself. But in the middle of all this trouble, identical copies of the two enter both the waifu's shower and keys. Only that here, at least our young girl is not stupid, she realizes in time that this fake husbando was only Odo Haim in disguise, and goes running to Ki's bathtub to have her toxic sister. However, when she arrives, she finds to her great surprise that they are not doing anything dirty, but they really just wanted to spend some time together and try to relive those beautiful moments of the past. But to Kanako's bad luck, those memories are no longer in her Oni Chan's mind. This problem, besides affecting the poor young girl, is also beginning to disturb the lives of the other girls, who consider it appropriate to put an end to all this mess and make one of the two clarify what the future of their relationship will be. Ki, upon hearing this, decides to ask Sakata for help to steal the keys of the abandoned house, so that he can devise a plan to stop hurting the people around him. Later that day, he leaves a letter in Nara's room, where he says that he is waiting for her tonight at the side door of the mountain building, which according to what the proto himself explains, was an ancient magical wedding chapel, as it is rumored that couples who get engaged here, create a special bond of love that lasts until so as our waifu doesn't have the slightest idea about this, she decides that it is better to send Kanoko, instead, so that these two can talk and reconcile, but after Haruka clarifies the picture about the legend of this house, the girl's expression changes completely. As much as she tried to get to the place as quickly as possible, this pair of siblings was already in the middle of a moment of declaration, and if that wasn't enough, just at the hour when the chapel works its magic, thus activating its hidden powers and consequently, creating a field around them where no one except the two chosen ones can intervene. Kit enters a kind of flashback together with Mo, the possessed doll, but this time is not the same memory of the two day and living happily ever after. Now we see an older Ki, who while helping Kanoko in the shower, tells her the legend of the abandoned house, and that is where he makes her the promise he talks so much about that someday the two of them will go together to that place and leave all the bad things behind. At the same time, Meru also enters into this kind of dream, which actually ends up being more of a nightmare because she can see with her own eyes how her husband is stolen from her and she can do nothing to prevent it. In a matter of minutes, the two wake up from this trance, but indeed, things are very different, because now the waifu cannot even get close to the couple of brothers because the spell of the chapel moves her away, or in the worst case, sends her flying, and as if that were not enough, this also affected the rest of the girls who involuntarily feel the obligation to keep the young girl away from the abandoned house. The good thing is that this power only affected her movements because after a while, they all meet in the bathroom and talk about the current situation, where as expected, Naru is cornered by her friends to admit her true feelings towards Ki. As the waifu makes her beg, her sister confronts her and asks her to say in front of everyone what her heart really wants, to which once again feeling so much pressure of the moment, she decides to run away and leave our boy unconscious. This makes Kanoko go into her toxic mode and decides that if a young girl can't admit her feelings for her Oni-chan in a nice way, she will have to resort to the hard way to put an end to this childish game. Later that day, Sakata takes her to the beach to watch the sunset together, and takes the opportunity to talk with her for a while. Naru tells us that the reason why she avoids following her heart is because she does not want to damage the good friendship she has with the rest of the girls, since she believes that if she accepts to be Ki's girlfriend, she will break the illusions of more than one and consequently, it will create an environment where no one can be happy anymore. Besides that, there is also the fact that she feels that the same thing could happen with her husband, confessing that she really enjoys being with him. Kanako upon hearing this because yes, all this time she was the one who was really behind Sakata's mask, decides to lead the words and better move on to the blows, telling the girl directly that in the case that everyone hates her, 
or does not want to know anything about her existence, she will always have our little bread on her side because he really loves her and has never had any doubt about it. As the little sister was fed up with not seeing a positive response from her, she decides to throw her into the water and steal her personality so she can take Key to a place where they can be alone together. However, Kanako's plan does not go as expected, since by this point in the story, Key knows how to differentiate her disguises perfectly. So taking advantage of the family moment, he decides to apologize for having forgotten the promise they made when they were children, admitting that he loves her in his own way, and that she will always have a special place in his heart. This in a way activates the powers of the abandoned shrine, which according to what Haruka explains to us, is a natural reaction for trying to oppose the will of the lover's pact, but to our good fortune. Just the original waifu arrives to try to rescue Ki and her sister. Inside, she meets Kano and Otoheim, who in this case were selected as the guardians of the place and therefore will do everything possible to prevent the girl from reaching the top floor. But after seeing for the first time a Naru completely determined in what she is going to do, they use all their strength to oppose the will of the house and thus give her the chance to continue to the next level. Here, Sukun greets her with a hail of missiles and Motoko possessed activates her samurai mode, but again, it is the same as before, the determination of the young girl is above all obstacles, and the girls realize this. Shinobu herself so as not to interrupt the sibling couple, who by the way was talking about their childhood days at the Hinata Inn and remembering all those beautiful moments they spent together. Back to the fight, this actually goes more to the reflective side, as the two talk about how Ki was important in their personal growth during these long and crazy months, so after giving Kanako enough time to say goodbye properly to her only love, it is the turn of the young girl to do what she's kept in store since the beginning. However, things were not going to be so easy, and as a last measure of desperation, the chapel begins to be destroyed by parts, which leaves the couple without many options to act. The waifu believes that if she can recover the engagement ring, she will be able to break the curse, but this object refuses to fall into her hands and she decides to go after our boy so that neither of them will have a happy ending. While Ki is in free fall into the void, Nuru decides to leave fear aside and jump to his rescue promising herself that she will never lie again because at the end of the day and shouting it to the whole world, she loves Kaitara with all her heart, and they can finally share their first official kiss, which for the convenience of the plot does not last long because both the girls and Sita come to interrupt, showing somehow that these two still have a lot of history ahead. But unlike the past times, now with all the security in the world, they can say that whatever it is, they will face it together as the couple in love that they are.